happy Memorial Day weekend. This is Juan Catamayo, JCT for Education for you. And I just wanna take a second to say to the people in our armed forces, in the military, thank you for your service. Thank you for supporting our nation. And thank you for everything that you do for us. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So to all of you, to the parents of our military, God bless you, I'm sending a big hello. So today we have a, a very special guest, ta -ta -ta -ta, all the way from Italy, and he's here, he's requesting desperate to this life. So here he is, without further ado, and I see Alex Body. Alex, we gotta bring you over, my friend. Hey, Parker, hey, how, are ya? how are you? Good, 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 how you doing? Good, come stai? Bene, bene, tu? Bene, bene. Dispiace, eh, mi italiano. Muy malo, muy, muy malo. <laughs> no, I can tell you studied it a little bit. Well, I love Italy. And today, Parker, thank you so much. Uh, it's a holiday here in the United States. And we decided to move forward. Um, you know, this is going all over the world. And we want to continue supporting our students, our parents, families, and educational consultants, high school counselors, and university people that are watching us. Uh, here, I see Rafa Jockey just sign up. Jess, just sign up. Alex Body you used to work at Modul University. We were just talking about Johanna. We got invited to her very soon. But Parker, how, how is everything in Milan? And thank you, thank you, and thank you, Bucconi, for agreeing to be on this live with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Things in Milan are uh, getting back to normal. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they began to um, uh, reopen stores and different uh, offices. And it seems like over the next couple of weeks, it's going to get even more, um, let's say, back to normal or to the new normal. Um, Italy is reopening its borders at the beginning of June. So okay. it's going to be possible to fly from, from Milan to London or to Paris, which is going to have a, a big change, or it's going to, let's say, um, bring us back to the way that, that we're used to living. So right now, how many days have you been on your apartment in Milan? <laughs> uh, no, nah, we've been in quarantine since, oh man, uh, late February, early March. I mean, Italy, okay. was, Italy was the first Western country to, to have the virus outbreak. Mm -hmm. um, and then Milan was the first city in Italy to, to get hit hard. So at Bocconi, we closed down uh, our campus uh, at the end of February. Okay. Uh, at, at the very first signs of an outbreak, uh, all universities in Milan were closed immediately. Bocconi was quick in, in the sense that within a matter of days, we had all the lessons moved online. So we didn't miss a beat at all. But then uh, about one or two weeks after the university closed, then there was the, uh, the, the, uh, the government that stepped in and said, okay, full stop, everybody at home. And, um, and that, was, that was the way we lived for about two months. And like I said, just a few weeks ago, we started reopening. Wow. So how, what's the percentage of international students that you guys have at Bucconi? Oh, well, if you're looking at the programs in English, it's between 40 and 50%. Wow. Um, overall, yeah, overall, probably around 20%, I would say. So we okay. had a lot of students, you know, a lot of the international students that had to make the decision of whether or not they wanted to stay in Milan and, uh, and do the quarantine here or return back home, uh, you know, and essentially be locked out of Italy for however long the quarantine would be. And surprisingly, you know, there were a good number of students that actually decided they wanted to stay here in Italy. Our okay. dorms stayed open, so if, if students didn't want to go home, they were able to stay here in, in Milan. Uh, let's talk about your dorms for a little bit. How many, how many students can you guys accommodate at Bucconi in your residence? 2,000. 2,000? We've got 2,000, yep, 2,000 rooms. Wow. The nice thing is that at Bucconi, the rooms are all individual. So okay. you don't have to you don't have to share your personal space. You don't have to you know have a bunk mate or anything like that. Okay. And in addition to that, there's actually a cleaning lady that comes through once a week to change your bed okay. sheets, to tidy up. 
So I think it's comparable to, to living in a hotel. You know, it's not what you think of whenever you imagine a, a college dorm. And out of the 2000, how many students have stayed at Bukoni throughout this period of time? Oh, I don't know the exact number. It's not incredibly high. I would say probably, I mean, if I had to give a number, I would say around 10% of international okay. students. Okay, so you probably have two, around 200 students have stayed on campus at Bukoni. Now, Parker, so you have a very interesting background. I see that you went to University of Missouri. Uh, I have mm -hmm. a cousin of mine, actually she's Colombian, went to high school here in the United States in Aventura. And I remember helping her with her college uh, list and, and so forth. And she was looking for the best journalism school in the country <laughs> and she got accepted into Misu. Uh, tell us, where are you from and what about, wh where did you go to high school? Sure, sure. Uh, well, I was born in Indiana and lived there until I was 10, and then uh, moved to Missouri for my dad's work. Okay. Um, I went to a regular public high school in, um, in my hometown. Uh, not, nothing too special about it. I had a great experience. Um, whenever I was in high school, I didn't know what I wanted to study. Uh, I knew I was going to go to college, and I knew that I was going to go to the University of Missouri because my dad worked there. He worked for the School of Journalism. Okay. So, um, so yeah, what, you know, my, 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 my planning process in going to college was, hey, I don't know what I want to do. I'll figure it out eventually. What I do know is where I'm going to go. Okay. So I ended up going to, uh, to Mizzou, to the University of Missouri. And uh, I didn't figure out what I wanted to do until my junior or senior year. And um, by that time, if I wanted to pursue the path that I did, I've ended up taking another year or two to graduate. So I ended up doing a program called Interdisciplinary Studies, yes. which is a fancy, a fancy way of saying um, general studies, you know, okay. or at, at the University of Missouri, they called it the create your own major, where you got to choose a few disciplines and then take classes uh, based on those. Anyways, then towards my junior or senior year, I, I thought I'd go and get a master's degree. And uh, right around that time, I had made friends with uh, international students who turned me on to the idea of going to Europe. And eventually I found a program at a university that I liked, which was at the University of Milan, master program in public and corporate communication, and pursued that. That's good. And just for the students that are watching, uh, I want to go back to the University of Missouri for the inter interdisciplinary studies. You focus on business, communications, and sociology, correct? Those are yep. the three areas that you focus. In business and communications, totally understand sociology. What what make you also pursue the area of sociology? Because you use it a lot as a college recruiter. You're interacting with individuals, but how did you decide to get into that track of sociology? Um, well, to, to be honest, I think it was because my freshman year, like my very first semester in college, I took an intro to sociology class, and I really liked the professor. And okay. uh, so the following semester, I took another class with that same professor. And then after that, I took another class with that very same professor. So I ended up accumulating, you know, like, uh, oh, I don't know, however many credits in sociology, just because I liked this one professor and I took a bunch of his classes. And before, uh, before you knew it, I had the, the requirements to, to meet the, the discipline for so okay, so let, let me take a second. Uh, right now we are with Parker Sidal from University of Bocconi or Bocconi Universita. And he's right now in Milan. He works in the Office of Admissions. Saludos a Veronica, saludos a Barbarita, to the whole team in admissions at Bocconi. We love you and thank you so much for sending one of your best ambassadors. Uh, Parker works as an international student recruiter, has been at Bocconi, and you correct me if I'm wrong, four years and, and, a ch and change. Uh, you've been to 20 countries, recruited in four different continents, and have probably visited over 100 international schools. How did you end up working for Bocconi University after you finished your master's degree at University of Milan? Well, I think everybody who works in college admissions, they don't, they don't necessarily go to college to, to become a college admissions officer. It's kind of something you can run into. Uh, whenever I was graduating from my master program, I, I was doing an internship at uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers, uh, an international uh, consulting firm, and I was pursuing a career in HR, 
in human resources. Okay. And um, while I was doing that internship, I got approached by, by Bocconi, who had already come in contact with me through a number of other uh, events. And they said, hey, we're looking for somebody who, who can attract students to come to Italy. And I had the background of being an international student who came to Italy. Um, and then they said, this is a job. Would you be interested in it? They explained to me how, how much travel would be involved. And it was something that I was interested in. So I, I took up the opportunity. And yeah, that was four, four and a half years ago. I'm still liking okay. the job. Okay. Well, I, I will tell you, I had the honor to know Bucconi for years as a former admission recruiter. But I just want to say, take a second. I want to say hello to Caneste, Tala Restrepo, Monica. <laughs> I think it's Monica is from Costa Rica. Mariajo, mm -hmm. Susan. We have here Saliski, Caro Jaramillo. We have a lot of people that join. So a todos ustedes, por favor, estamos, quédense aquí, díganle a sus amigos, pongan ese avioncito que ustedes ven abajo, díganle que estamos con una de las mejores universidades del mundo, una de las mejores en negocios, Bucconi University, estamos con Parque Ciudad de la Oficina de Admisiones. Luis García, un abrazo, Miami, espero que estés muy bien. We want to have Luis García to join our live one day. Leti Capriles, un, un saludo, Lanel Cueto, un abrazo. Carlos Jaramillo en Medellín. You see, you see, Parker, we have people from all over the world. We have Caro as well. So let's go back. Let's go back to Bucconi. Let's go back to you. Uh, when, when we travel around the world, I remember being in Asia recruiting, and mm -hmm. you guys were in one of our recruiting tools, uh, tours. And when you got in front of the high school audience and the students, you, the, the rep will say, Bucconi University, and the students will go, Wow, Bucconi. And it's like a dream coming through to study at Bucconi. Parker, how did Bucconi become so famous, so, so good academically? Tell us a little bit, send us a little bit of historical data about Bucconi. Sure. Uh, well, the, the background, um, you know, it's an old university. It's been around since the early 1900s. So by no means was it, you know, something that was created just a decade ago. Um, 1902, I believe, was the, the year it was founded. And it was the first uh, university in Italy to grant a degree in economics. And I think its role in European economics and European politics really took, took hold during the, uh, the Italian economic miracle that took place after World War II, where Italy really became one of the, the strongest economies in the world. Um, and it continues to be a very relevant economy in the world. It's part of the, the G8, the G7, however it's called now. You know, it's a founding member of the European Union. So, you know, being the first university in Italy and to this day the, the strongest university in Italy in the field of economics um, really gives us this reach and this, 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 uh, this, this image of being, you know, good at what we do. Okay. Uh, Parker, you have an incredible program that I'm very, I'm always sharing with our students. And is that program that you have with Hong Kong University University of Southern California and Bucconi. Can you walk mm -hmm. us through how many students per year uh, the three universities will take and how they rotate from Hong Kong, California, Milan, and where do they do their fourth year as a university student? Sure, the, the World Bachelor in Business, it's kind of a unique program. I really don't know many, of, many other universities that offer something like this. Basically, it's four years, Students spend the first year studying at uh, the University of Southern California in LA. Then the second year, they travel together with their class, classmates to, uh, to spend that year at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. The third year, they travel to Milan and they study with us at the Comi. Then the fourth year, each student is able to choose which of the three universities they want to return to to finish out the program. Okay. And regardless of where they go for the fourth year, whenever they finish the program, they get a degree from each institution. So they end okay. up graduating with an American degree, a European degree, and a Chinese degree. And having those three degrees obviously allows them to enter labor markets. It gives them a lot of, 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 of advantages whenever they, they start looking for work. How many students are you collectively graduating every year from that cohort, from that program? Around 50. It's a very competitive program. You know, so we're, we're accepting applications from all over the world. 
Uh, and it takes a particular type of student to, to succeed in the world bachelor in business. For one, they have to have a stellar academic profile. But on top of that, they have to show this flexibility uh, or this capability of being able to move from one country to the next and be in an entirely foreign environment and succeed. So we look at, you know, we look for, for candidates who have knowledge of multiple languages, experience living in multiple countries, attending an international school, these sorts of characteristics in their profile. Good. Um, now, I want you to share to the, to the parents that are watching, the students, colleagues, yet you are one of the top universities in Europe and your fees are extraordinarily affordable. How much are, is tuition, of, to, just tuition at Bocconi per semester or per year? Per year, tuition is around 13,000 euros. Okay. Um, so if you're thinking in terms of US dollars, I think it's 14, 14,000 mm -hmm. ish. Now that, yeah. that is by, you know, if you compare it to, you know, the standards that we're used to in the United States, it's super low. You know, it's, it's comparable to, um, to in-state tuition. Like I think, I think the University of Missouri in-state tuition costs more, you know? Yes. But this, this is a thing that's entirely r relative to where you're living in the system of education that you're, you're uh, used to. Because a German student, whenever I speak with them, if I tell them that it costs 13,000 euros per year, they say, wow, that's a lot. The reason okay. why is because public universities in, in Germany are, are free. You know, mm -hmm. Even public yeah. universities in Italy uh, are, are, are much, much cheaper than Bocconi. So yes. 13,000 euros per year, without a doubt, it's a great value for money. Is it cheap? I tend to not answer that because I know it's entirely relevant to, to what you're used to. Yes, no, and, and it's really affordable. Uh, we have had the opportunity to have a students applying to Bocconi. We know how difficult it is. Uh, we understand what caliber of students uh, you're looking for. Now, two questions. Number one, now the SAT and ACT is so hard. I mean, you can't even take it. You see a lot of schools are going test optional. What are your conversations in the Office of Admissions for SAT and ACT, period, standardized testing? Well, first of all, I can say that, uh, you know, like every other university, we've been following the developments. We've seen test dates be canceled. And we've seen students be put in a difficult position. Um, what we did right away was push back our application timeline. So usually students who are looking to apply during our early session, they would have already submitted their application or they would be yeah. doing it right, right now. Um, whenever we realized that it was going to be hard to take the SAT or ACT, we pushed back our early application session. So now students will apply uh, in July, August, and September. However, even after we did that, we saw that more test dates were canceled. So what we ended up doing was, you know, offering our own test online. So we have okay. an alternative to the SAT or the ACT. It's called the Pony Test. Uh, it, it, the content is basically the same. It measures mathematical and logical reasoning. But um, again, we're not dependent on the SAT or the college board, you know, holding exams because we're able to do it on our own and digitally or virtually. So students can take the test from the safety of their own home. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that idea and all that. And I will make sure that we share that with our friends and colleagues. This is, this is what is so good about these lives because we learn so much. Now we have a question for, for Italian citizens. Do you have financial aid? Uh, is there a different fee structure or is it the same whether you're international? or Italian, and do you offer merit scholarship to international students? Well, I can say that you don't have to be an Italian citizen. You don't even have to be uh, an EU citizen in order to be eligible for financial aid or, or, or scholarships. Okay. All students that apply, or all international students that apply for a bachelor program for Tony, they're automatically going to be considered two types of scholarships. Okay. One is called the, the Merit Award, which we give out based on merit. So students who have a very high academic profile. Then the second award we call the International Award, and that's given to students who have not only strong academic profile, but who can also bring diversity to Bocconi's campus. Now, those are two types of scholarships that we have, and that students are automatically evaluated. So there's okay. no separate application. Then, in addition to that, we have what we call uh, financial aid, which comes in the form of tuition uh, reductions. And basically okay. to 
be given one of those, you have to apply and provide financial documents from your family, proving the, the economic situation that you guys are in. And then depending on the, the income or the assets, we'll assign a lower tuition bracket if necessary. So the tuition okay. fees can actually go down to, to between five and 6,000 euros per year. Wow, that's, that's very affordable. Now, what's the total enrollment for Bukoni, both undergraduate and graduate? 14,000. 14,000 and undergraduate population out of that 14,000? Uh, between seven and 8,000. Okay. And out of those, 50% of the courses are taught in English, correct? Um, so if you're looking at bachelor programs, uh, about one third of the students in the undergraduate, or one third of the programs in the undergraduate school are going to be, uh, let me say this. Most of the programs that we offer are in English. Okay. 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 But then we have different class cohorts. So we'll have Italian class cohorts and international class cohorts. Okay. The international class cohorts make up one third of the undergraduate school. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Now we have Emily Dawson from Brazil. She is asking a good question. We have Barbarita, your colleague. She joined us. So Barbara, hola. Mm -hmm. uh, Emily says, what type of paperwork is required for the financial assistance? Uh, remember, she's working with the students in Brazil. Okay. Now, um, generally what they're going to look for are tax returns from the family, right? To okay. see how much money they made, uh, what, what sort of assets they hold. Uh, and then that will have to be translated into Italian and certified by the Italian consulate and receive uh, wherever you're living. Okay. Parker, uh, I've been dealing with this uh, situation with a lot of students. We work with the students from Miami, international families, and also students mm -hmm. from Latin America, a few Europeans. Uh, Emily says, got it. Thank you. So the question <laughs> is, uh, currencies in Latin America, they have depreciated anywhere between 10% to 30%. Uh, for your returning mm -hmm. students and actually incoming freshmen, have, is Bukoni assigning like an emergency fund that could help offset the cost to a lot of these families? Whether they're missing two, three, four thousand euros to pay for their education. What contingency plans do you guys have for those families? Well, what I can say is that we're always evaluating, you know, economic trends that take place, whether they be in, in Latin America or in Turkey. Um, again, we have these scholarships and financial aid available. What I can add is that in addition to what Bocconi provides, there are also these different scholarships uh, available from the, the Lombardy region, region where it okay. is. Um, okay. So personally, I know of Turkish students who didn't receive a scholarship from Bukoni, but they managed to get uh, what's called the ISU, the ISU uh, scholarship from the Lombardy region. Okay, now, uh, right now, uh, students in high schools from all over the world, they're looking at summer programs. I understand your summer mm -hmm. uh, programs online deadlines are due or you have extended deadlines. Have you heard anything yet? No, we had two rounds. Yeah, we've already closed the deadlines, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. Um, but again, if, if, if you have uh, students joining us who are in their, uh, let's say, who are going to be juniors next year, um, they still have the opportunity to partake in the summer program between okay. their junior and senior year. I am so, on a, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's still an opportunity for them. Uh, but for those who are going to be seniors this year, unfortunately, the deadline has been Okay, well, thank you. And I am a member of a couple of WhatsApp groups uh, with counselors from around the world. And that has been the major talk in the last four weeks looking for online summer programs. So when you guys send us, uh, Barbarita send me your online summer programs, we share that with the whole group of uh, counselors from Latin America and from around the world. So thank you. Uh, Parker, what's, what's happening right now with airports? Uh, you told us that airports will be opening soon for like European flights. What have you heard about international flights from different continents coming particularly to Milan? <laughs> I think Italy is anxious to reopen. Um, consider that, you know, Italy is a tourist destination. And so there are many cities 
in Italy that rely on people coming in to the country during the summer months to, mm -hmm. to bring in those tourist dollars. Um, like I said, early June, Italy is going to be reopening its borders. I think Europe in general wants to, to pick things up and get flights going between countries. Um, outside of the, the European Union or outside of the Schengen area, it's still a bit uncertain. Um, okay. You know, I was supposed to go back to the United States this summer and the flight that I had booked got canceled because, wow. uh, yeah, I mean, th there are still no direct flights between uh, the United States and Italy. Right. Unless, y you know, you can fly, I guess, between the United States and Italy. You have to do a layover in a different country. To be honest, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the regulations or restrictions are and who can travel for what reasons. What I'm hoping is that by the end of the summer, everything is, 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 is reopened. Yes, uh, I've been having guests from different universities here in the United States, from, from, from Spain. You are the first one that we have from Italy. So thank you so much. What are the talks amongst the European universities? I know you belong to a consortium of European universities. How are you guys going to be recruiting this fall? What are the techniques that you're going to be utilizing since uh, travel will be so restricted around the world? Well, actually, our office was talking about this the other day, how, you know, this fall will be a great opportunity to strengthen some of our you know, digital marketing strategies to, you know, strengthen our CRM network, some of these mm -hmm. behind the scene things that we do um, in order to keep track of students' information, keep track of contacts. Uh, but whenever we're traveling all the time, it's hard to find a moment to do this stuff. So, of course, you know, having this fall off, I should say off, meaning not traveling, it creates other opportunities to work. Yes, and uh, certainly we're going to miss you. We run our annual seminar in Medellin, Colombia, where we have universities from all over the world. We have you guys in the past. And I'm going to Yeah, I think the, Lisa went. Didn't she? Yeah, Lisa went there. And yeah. I'm going to miss every single university. And even our students, we run that program in September. Uh, we are not going to run it. Uh, I mean, there is no travel. I am not certain if I will be able to travel back to Colombia in the fall and so forth. So as you're saying, we are taking a moment to brief, to reevaluate our strategies, to connect, to grow more as a civilization. And Parker, I got to tell you, I was reading on your LinkedIn something that, that I really like about you and what you wrote. And I want you, as a marketing expert, brand expert, you mentioned something that our older generations, uh, meaning probably our parents, grandpas, they are becoming more tech savvy. Would you want to touch on that for a little bit? I thought whenever I wrote that, I was thinking of my mother-in-law. Okay. Who she's an elementary school teacher, and she's she's done that for her entire life, and you know she's not into computers. She doesn't enjoy being on a computer. She knows how to check her email, and that's it. But whenever they close the school, she all of a sudden had to learn how to use, you know, uh, you know Zoom, Skype, all these sorts of things that she wasn't used to. And um, I remember the first week, she would ask me to, to set it up for her, to show her how, how to do it. But then by, by the second week, she was already completely autonomous with it. Right. Yes. Yes. And so just seeing that made me realize that there are certain benefits, you know, um, are not benefits, but there are positive outcomes as a result of this. I, I know. And you're absolutely right. Even my parents, uh, they are teaching me. I didn't know with WhatsApp, you can have eight people at the same time that you can that you can actually have a video conference on WhatsApp. So as you were saying, our our parents, our grandpas are becoming more tech savvy. And that's something that we are learning from them. Uh, it, it is fascinating how things are moving. I have uh, M Emily Dobson from Brazil is asking a question. How does the medical system work on campus for students at Bocconi? I'll answer this with a question to you. <laughs> how, how much do you think a student pays in Italy for one year's worth of health insurance? Okay, uh, my estimate is zero. Yeah, close enough. It's about 130 euros for an entire year's 
worth wow. of, of um, health insurance. Yeah, wow. so that's, that's what a student pays to subscribe to the national healthcare system. Um, by doing that, they get their own doctor, they're able to schedule appointments. Um, if wow. they see their doctor and the doctor needs to pass them on to a specialist, they can do so. Uh, so there are all these things that, you know, are unbelievable for me coming from the United States. Uh, I'm lucky enough to where I can say that I've never had to use the, the healthcare system. I've, I've been healthy. I've never been in an emergency, but I've known people who have, and, um, and they'll, you know, one person I know was in the hospital for a week. They left, no bill, nothing. You know, they just packed up their bags and walked out the front door. And, um, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, so Emily says, obrigado. Wow. 130 euros is, is really nothing compared to what we pay here. Don't ask me that question live, how much I have to pay for my <laughs> life insurance, because it's, it's a lot. It's five times over what you just mentioned. And, and it's crazy. Yeah. And I never go to yeah. the emergency room, knock on wood or the hospital. So very good because I know students here in the U.S., they will pay anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars per year for health insurance. So that is really good to know. Parker, uh, I see Pana Gringa, love Bucconi. She's in, in Panama. And Jenny, thank you so much for your time. It was great having you last week. Parker, any final thoughts? What have you learned from this uh, and present circumstances, what message do you have for students, parents, and colleagues that are watching from all over the world? Well, I would say that, um, you know, the message that we've been giving to students ever since this outbreak began is that whenever you're applying to college, uh, you have to think of it as a long-term decision, right? And therefore, the choices that they make now shouldn't be based on the current situation, which is temporary. You know, it might last another few months, it might last another year, but, but it will end. And then you have to think about the rest of your life, right? So whenever you choose where to go to college, what you want to study, just think of it long term, right? Don't, okay. uh, don't get scared by the current situation. Okay. And most important, Parker, how is your family in the United States? How are they doing and how are things? Are they right now in Indiana or they are in Missouri? Uh, in Missouri. And yeah. my, uh, my dad's retired, and luckily they didn't close the golf course. So he's doing okay. just fine. Okay. And, and what about you? Are you? When are you guys opening your office of admissions? When are you going back to your office? Uh, well, the, the campus is, is reopening. Um, we're not going if we don't have to. Okay. Um, we're to, to limit you know, coming in contact with other people. But uh, slowly, it's, it's reopening. Uh, okay. One thing that I can say is that, you know, even our campus has become so much more, you know, the way we work is, has become much more, um, well, for example, our office, you know, we, uh, at the beginning of this crisis, we were working from desktop computers. Right? Yeah. We had their, their, their desk, and we had our computer, and we had a cell phone line. And uh, as soon as the outbreak started, we said, okay. That's it. We got to get laptops. You know, probably should have done it a while ago. But this uh, this crisis really acted as a catalyst to, to you know to buying laptops. And yes, I I know, and this is changing everybody's life of, of random. How do we work? But there is a chat going on here with Panagringa and Emily Dobson in Brazil. Uh, Panagringa says, "I had three students at Buconi," and then Emily says, uh, <laughs> "Totally on my radar," and now. Salisha so uh, is coming on our conversation this week, but uh, I yeah, want to say uh, Colombia with Salisha last year. Yeah, how was Colombia? Do you like it? Oh, I love Colombia. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we had a great tour. It was the uh, the CIS tour, so we did yes. two weeks. Uh, yeah, great time. Okay, and see now we have Rachel. All the people are signing on when we're gonna say goodbye. But uh, I just want to say, Parker, to you. Everybody at Buconi, thank you so much. Barbara, Veronica, everyone, we love you guys. Thank you. This is your space. Anytime that you want to come back, we're really sad that the CIS uh, conference won't be happening. But uh, thank you. And here we have a message here. B. Priester, very important session one. Parker is a class <laughs> act. So I totally agree. Oh, I know that guy. <laughs>
thank you so much, man. And stay safe. And remember, mi casa es tu casa. Anytime that you want to come back, just let us know, okay? Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Ciao, ci vediamo. Ciao, ciao. Buonasera, buonasera. Ciao. Bye.